All right, welcome back to another episode of Block Party. I'm your host, Mike Wall. If you're enjoying this, please hit that subscribe button, rate and review us, et cetera, et cetera. Give me some feedback, ask questions, try to get everybody, uh, every answer that I can, every question I can get answered, I do get answered, but <clears throat> you can check us out, obviously, on YouTube, backslash process to perform. This week, last week we did Packers center Josh Myers. This week, I got one between two tackles got drafted this year. Once a draft and develop guy, Zach, Tom, Packers, He's played every different position. He played left tackle against the Redskins. That's the game I broke down. And then Char- and so Zach Tom is a fourth round pick out of Wake Forest. I think in the combine he was somewhere around six foot four, um, three hundred pounds ish. He's uh, somebody. I think he's somewhere between two ninety and, and three hundred five, depending on who you're talking to. Charles Cross, Mississippi State, ninth pick in the draft, came out. He is uh, six foot five. He was when he was drafted. He was around three hundred three pounds. I worked with this guy for a couple of days. Uh, right prior to training camp. He's well over 320 at the time. Looks great, moves great. So we'll kind of see what these two different guys look like. We'll compare them. Again, we do process-based comparison here. We're trying to figure out how they're moving. Are they moving in the correct manner given the requirement of their position in that moment? We break everything down by positional requirement. We break everything down by movement pattern. And then we're just going to get a good sense of where these guys are, what their ceilings look like, if they're technical issues, if they're physical issues, if, if it's just cognitive stuff and, or, or if it's if they aren't in the right system for the for the uh, kind of body type that they have. We'll check this out. Let's go right into it here with Zach Tom. I'm excited to, you guys to see this because when you pick up a fourth rounder and you got you have you have physical ability like this guy has. And a lot of the stuff we're going to point out right now is kind of things that I see that probably are not pointed out on on some other programs. But this is what's important to me because I know what it takes to be successful in this league as far as your footwork in particular, the way you start your stance, your hand placement, your body position, et cetera, et cetera. So let's start with Zach Tom. He's number 50. He's playing left tackle this entire game. We'll take this. The biggest thing, watch this first step. Now this seems like a no brainer, a simple, that right there, his ability to gain leverage with your first step on the backside is something out of his regular stance, out of his what we just call mixed down stance, stance he can use in any situation. That is very, very unique. That is very, very unique. When you watch across the entire National Football League, there is literally a couple handful of guys doing this the right way on a consistent basis. Zach Tom has this on day one. That is one of the many reasons I'm so high on him. You'd love to see his gut drop a little bit more, so you'd like to see his pad level a little bit lower here in the contact. However, that first step is so big time. Gets right by a great player in Jaron Allen. It appears that he's going to be in pass protection right now. You, you see his stance. Let's just start off with this. So I, you never like to see that uh, that outside foot pointed towards the sideline. Why? Because you're giving up kind of power in your posterior chain. A lot of coaches are teaching this. They originally started teaching this, I believe, because a lot of bigger guys have ankle mobility issues. The reality is when you're trying to move in the best manner possible, there's a way that your hip socket – Fit, you know, the, your femur fits into your hip socket, and that's going to kind of manifest into the way that your feet are on the ground, whether they're like this, whether they're parallel, whether they're slightly, etc. However, that is for your particular body type, that's how you should be moving around. When you open this hip up, we've talked about this before. You open your hip, you're already halfway to the sideline. Your body repositions, and within a kick or two, you're already going to be pointed towards the sideline. That's the last thing we want. We do want, do not want to stay. Uh, we do not want to point ourselves towards the sideline for at least three kicks, especially playing the left tackle position. Why? Because they can collapse in. They can go around you upfield. They can make you uh, turn your shoulders, turn your body, and go back inside if they'd like to. So let's check this out. I think this is pass protection. And we see here, like, this is one. This is a technical issue, but one thing that Zach does is he almost clicks his heels on his on his first kick slide. So when you put yourself in a bad body position, you see that he's going out. So he's been taught to angle set again. That's something that coaches do. That you know, I can I can show you like hours and hours and hours of film where angle setting gets you beat inside, gets you put put you in a bad position, and also gets you to a point where you can't uh, engage in confrontation under control. So when you pay, when you play left tackle, left guard, right guard, t- right tackle, etc. When you're doing pass protection against a defensive lineman, what you're really trying to do is get to your real estate position under control. Whoever gets to the real estate position under control and ready to engage is going to have success. When you're in this position, especially against a speed rusher, and you're going out at an angle, just from a physical standpoint, you're usually not ready to punch and react to movement as fast as you'd like to be. You're just hoping basically that guy runs right into you or gets confused because you're out there so fast. So 
Zach clicks his heels on these. They recover. It's not a big deal. So in this play, everyone says, hey, he won that one. Well, I, I don't really care, right? What I care about is are you doing it the right way? Because if you do it the right way when pressure's on and the situation's different, you're going to have the outcome that you want. He's over on the right side of your screen now. Now, I put this in here because he is in a very good position out of two-point stance. The hardest thing to do is run block a guy like any of the Washington Redskins defensive ends. They're all good, good players. One of the hardest things to do is run block and try to get a good pad level, good landmarks and everything out of a two-point stance. Now, you see Zach's got a pretty good bend. He's probably you, – you'd love to see him a little bit, you know, what we call gut drop. You'd like to see him a little bit lower, but it's that's something that can be taught. You see his hands are both inside. It looks like his hat might be, from a landmark standpoint, a little bit outside eye, which you don't necessarily want with the running back coming from the backside because that means he's not going to be trying to get outside of you. But everything he has right here is a, a chance to be successful. First couple steps are good. Again, you just see that he's a little bit high up the field so he can fall back in. The real problem here is obviously other places on the offensive line made some mistakes. We got some misdirection in the backfield or change of directions in the backfield. But Zach's initial movement puts him in a position to be successful for the most part. You see this heel click again. So really when we start talking about this, what we see more often than not is his second step, whether it's because he's heel clicking, whether because it's turning his feet towards the sideline, that's kind of the big developmental issue. And I think the big thing for Packer fans and everybody's act Tom, whoever, whoever's listening, like these are correctable. It's just something you really have to hyper-focus on in your pre-practice routine, your post-practice -post routine, and every time you get a rep during the practice session. You see him catching a little bit here. What I mean by catching is he's not being trying to first to punch. He's not jabbing out with both hands. You can go either want to go independent hands or hands together. You want to punch and extend. You want to be out here and lock this guy out. You want to be hands inside, at least with one of your hands, preferably that inside hand. And that kind of lets him get pulled back into the quarterback. But again, that is a technique problem. That isn't a physical problem. Let me back this up a little bit because I went a little bit too far. So first step, this is a C block with Mercedes Lewis coming down to Montez Sweat. Montez Sweat is a great run defender. First round draft pick for the Washington Commanders years ago. <clears throat> Zach Tom steps backwards. Now, when you lose, so he's he's losing ground, right? He's gained a little bit of leverage, but he's losing ground in a situation he doesn't need to. Why does that matter? If you step backwards, your second step is either going to be short and you're going to be high into contact, or it's going to be long and you're going to be off balance into contact. You've kind of screwed up that timing that is determined by the space between the defensive end and the tackle in this situation. So when you step backwards, you're Doing a, you're, you're kind of losing leverage against what you're trying to accomplish because you can't enter into contact with the right body height. You see that he looks, there's a no numbers mentality here. You can't see the, the number, the 50 clean on his chest, but hands are outside, not ready to strike. And as he rises up on the second step, he's going to be a little bit high just simply because he stepped backwards on his first step. So we go into contact here and he does a good job. And the reason that Montez Sweat sheds him so easily is because he's blocking the inside number thinking that this ball is not going to bounce outside to his left, okay? So this is not this is not something you would say this is a poor job, but you do want to improve, obviously, your ability to enter into contact with a little more force. How do you do that? Initial footwork. I think I put this play in here. So great first step, obviously. I put this play in here on play action pass, under center play action pass, just because I love his effort, right? He's looking for work. He goes in and helps to – he helps the tight end. Like, let's back this up. If, any of there's, if there's fans of football and you haven't watched this dude do work, number 89, Mercedes Lewis, tight end on the left part of the screen. I mean, he's just he's just all over that dude. That's amazing. I watch Shaq Tom now, still looking work, still looking for work, chasing the ball down. Intangibles, guys. Like this, I know this matters. This matters to coaches. This matters to teammates more than you can imagine. Doesn't show up on the stat sheet. We talked about angle setting. We talked about clicking your heels together. This is where it kind of becomes a problem. You see this body position that he's in now. That right foot is up in the air. It's kind of behind his left foot. His arms aren't in. He's going helmet to helmet. So now the it's, if, if I just showed you a screenshot of those two people, the aggressor is clearly 
the commander's defensive end, right? The person that's in control is clearly the commander's defensive end. And this is where we want to maybe learn how to line set a little bit further back, a little bit deeper, be square into contact, put ourselves in a position to be successful so we can punch, extend, sit, and not absorb this with our chest. Because when we absorb it with our chest, more often than not, they're going to go back into the quarterback's lap. You see that left foot's open. That's just something, that, again, technical issue. I'll bet you this guy has great ankle mobility, doesn't need to be doing that. It's probably been taught to do that at the at maybe at the college level and it's been carried on here. That's something you can improve almost immediately. I mean, it'll take a little bit of time just to get a new stance to be comfortable with it. But you will be you can see him right now. He's kind of squaring his feet back up into the position that's most comfortable for his body from a biomechanical standpoint. And you look, he's got great hip bend, great hip hinge. Hands shouldn't be outside, need to be settled because he's going to take one right here. He's in a position now because he's kind of, we just call this catching, right? You're not punching and extending with your arms. You're going to take this on your chest. You, get, you play against these good defensive ends, and they're just going to try to run you back into the quarterback. Now, when you watch these games, I, you really have to do, to be fair to, to, to these guys, to do them justice, you have to do multiple games. I, I just did one of each today. And as we look at the statistics, you'll see they're a little bit skewed because there's X amount of passes versus runs, et cetera. One thing is you watch this watching the Commanders game, they're away. It's, it's Zach Tom's first time playing out left tackle in a regular season. One thing you notice is, and I, I, tried, to, I tried to show it here, EJ Elton Jenkins, he gets his foot down, and he's basically a lot quicker off the snap than Zach Thomas. So Elton Jenkins already has his left foot down, his first step down, he's redirecting, and Zach Tom's foot is still in the air. Now that's a function of maybe that's a function of just who they are as far as being able to move physically. Um, I tend to think in this instance, just because you've, you've watched the guy, you can see that he's got he's a great athlete. He was slow off the ball almost the entire day to, uh, in this game. Maybe it's because he doesn't mental on the right side of the inside part of the inside foot in this instance. Maybe it's because he's just laid off the snap because it's silent count, but he's not moving quite as fast as as, as the interior line. You see it when he pulls. You see it on, on a bunch of different plays here. There's not the suddenness. I think a lot of that has to do with experience. So, again, when we look through all the different things that Zach Tom can do well, the, the areas of opportunity, everything we've talked about so far is really technical. Can he get bigger, faster, stronger? Can he gain some weight? Can he gain some power and explosiveness as he develops into his body as he, you know, and continues to grow? He's probably, what, 22, 23 years old? Absolutely. But all the physical tools are there. I think that's what's exciting. When you get a fourth-round pick, that can move like this guy can move. And all of this stuff is really technical. Man, it's big time. Okay, so as we as you just sit here and think about that, <clears throat> we saw some, obviously, he points some things out that are areas of opportunity. And now I'm going to show a guy that has been playing at a high level all year, starting from day one. Ninth pick in the draft, okay? Now, he's got about 20 pounds on, on Zach Tom. And, and this guy is unique. I'm just – I've been around him. He's unique. But you'll see that a lot of the same themes come up because the level of detail and coaching, et cetera, et cetera, when you're in college is probably a little bit different than it is in the National Football League. You're certainly not seeing guys like Montez Sweat every snap in the in, – in, even in ACC football, for example, as you are, you know, you come into the league, you got to play these first round picks. You got to play these guys from Georgia, from Alabama. I mean, it's, it's a real deal. So let's check out Charles Cross and some of the things he does well, some of the things he does poorly. The first thing is that he's very, very smooth with his sets. And this is what you're getting with a first round pick right here. He can do that. He punches and extends defensive ends from run and pass as well as literally anybody I've ever seen do it. I mean, this guy is super, super unique in his ability to punch, extend, and almost like disassociate his upper body from his lower. He can run with extended hands and just have his feet moving like the roadrunner. The guy is a very, very unique athlete, but this is something, I don't know if this is something that he can do naturally, he's been taught, but it is very, very special that he can do that right there on a consistent basis. This field, again, we talk about um, you know, some of the issues when you're when you're watching film and you're making grades. Like as we, as anybody who's watched the Seattle Bucks game, when I think it was over in this is the German game, the field was awful. 
right? So they're slipping and sliding everywhere. So you have to take all this stuff into account, right? So it's not just the numbers that come out, it's the context of which you, you kind of make observations. So we see Charles here. Charles has the same problem that every other young player does. Every other player that's coached to go out and run at their guy every once in a while and try to mix it up on him. That's the worst thing you can do. Mix it up on a guy, try to go jump set him, try to angle, try to flat set what happens, inevitably you get beat inside, right? Whether or not whether or not you can recover or not, all these things, like he's a phenomenal athlete, but that's not what you're looking to do more often than not. Because if you're a big guy, all your momentum's going to the left, all of a sudden the guy cuts across your face. You have to get your feet down. You have to be in a great position. You, you have to not open up like the hand of a clock and you have to be able to punch, extend and ride that guy down to your, to your um, left guard or your right guard. Otherwise, if they're running an ET, for example, the game's clean. Again, you just see this is the run game. He's got him fully extended and his ability to strike and extend and kind of roll through his hips is a, it's a very, very unique thing. He's good with his footwork, good with the second step here. You see he just punches and extends. Basically got, has this guy on roller skates for a minute. This is, uh, this is again, this is something that he just does extremely well. Of course, his player gets back in the, in the fold here, but we're kind of looking at the initial footwork and contact. And then any time that a guy falls off on a play that's being you know, happening behind the line of scrimmage, we kind of dismiss that, I think, or at least I dismiss that because certainly that's not what the expectation is as far as where the running back's going to be. <clears throat> you see the punch, you, you see the ability on Vita Vea to come down on the B. His first step was not perfect. His first step, he stepped underneath himself a little bit so he can work on the technical footwork. But now he punches in and extends on Vita Vea and is able to put him down on the ground. And it's again, his ability to roll through, right? Because his, his second step's great. He understands his hand placement. He's good at extending, he's good at rolling through with his hips. Takes a poor step right here, or stepping underneath himself. Does a good job of moving, but it kind of screws up the timing with the guard. The guard's out of position. Beta Bale actually keeps leverage on this. Turns back. Again, this doesn't really involve the play. It's just you're trying to figure out individually what can you do to improve all the time. For him, it's that first step, particularly on the backside, that's two in a row. Same thing we saw with, with Zach Tom. You know, you, you kind of take a flat step, you heel click together. These are the situations. And again, he could be coached. I, I would not be surprised at all if he's been told to run at this guy, try to close that gap. The truth is he never gets beat when he's just sets the way that he's been, that he's set, you know, for the last four years of his life. Guys like this get beat when they go off script. So again, an inconsequential play, but you just look at why does why is the why is the defender able to run around the corner? It's because at some point Zach or uh, Charles has been told, "Hey, go out and run at this guy." We're not used to doing it. Offensive linemen don't really practice that a ton. Like if you're doing, let's say you do a thousand pass sets a week, right? You're not doing a thousand run out at the guy, get your feet clicked together. Do it. You're not doing that. You're doing a thousand of your pass sets. So, offensive linemen out there, coaches. Don't tell your guys to go off script. Have them trust in what they do. The only time the guys should go off script if it's if if is if that play is gonna have no consequence. It's a keep pass. You know you have an outside help, an inside help. Like if you whip from a guy completely, it doesn't matter. Then you can mix your stuff up. But when it matters, you don't want to give up sacks, pressures, any kind of thing that ruins confidence or brings confidence down because you went off script. Trust in your set. You work your set, you prepare for your set. You have confidence in your set. Trust your set. I brought this in for two reasons. One, you can see if, if you've been watching, Charles has a couple of different uh, stances. Now, a lot of people have been talking about, well, does stance matter? Well, yeah, it does matter. That's why people study film. And why does it matter? Well, because everybody on the planet knows they're going to pass the ball right now if, if they've been watching film on Charles' stance. Now, whether that matters in the context of, of the Seattle Seahawks, whether they care or not, you know, versus him being squared out and show that he's going to go into the run where he puts his hands on his on his uh, thigh pads or, or knee pads. Whether you know if his if his stance is a little bit wider, if he's if he's got a stagger, he's going to go to the left. He doesn't. He's going to if he doesn't have a stagger, he's probably going to go to the right. Linebackers see that. Safety see that. And we could talk about 
you know, you hear different people out there saying it matters. It doesn't matter, man. Go ask Ed Reed if it matters. Like, got, got old school guys read this stuff. It does matter. But why I showed this is because a rookie does a phenomenal job here of understanding what a SIF, a SIF protection is and, and understand that he has to account for that linebacker in the middle. Ends up doing a great job. They run the cross dog. They don't pick this up, but Charles sees it and does pick it up. And you want to bring that up and and and, and uh, applaud that because at, at a young age to be able to see that as well as he did, that's why he's in the two point obviously. But you know that's one of the reasons his his football IQ is pretty high. Again, this is why uh, some guys go. This guy's a three hundred twenty plus pound human. He can roll his hips just like that. His first and second step were perfect. And he's going to move this guy off the ball and be able to sustain that drive. I mean, that's a huge hole he just created on a single block. You don't see that across the National Football League with a lot of uh, offensive linemen, period, much less a rookie. So phenomenal job. And you see, I think when you look at, you know, Charles and Zach, we see the hip thrust. We see we see the uh, the, roll, the hip roll. We see the, the good footwork on, the, on, on these down blocks for the most part of the drive blocks. I think one thing you can say that is a little bit different, a reason that one's a you know a first round pick, maybe one's a fourth round pick, I was, uh, aside from the schools that they went to and the competition they faced, is Charles has had Charles has a legitimate twenty pounds of, of of power and explosion on him, and so Zach Tom can develop into that, right? But you're looking at a draft and develop guy versus a guy that you know, quite frankly, can step in day one, has every physical measure that you need to dominate. Angle sets, when you angle set, you're not really in a position to be successful because the guy's into his body, his arms are wide, guy's into his body, right? He has to redirect now. One thing I love and one thing that uh, is different than what Zach Tom does is Zach Tom in his first step will, will start turning that right foot towards the sideline. You see here that Charles, even though he comes out wide, he, he keeps that inside foot pointed towards the line of scrimmage. That's actually a really big deal here because that means he doesn't have to open up. He hasn't turned his hips, so he doesn't have to open up. So now he can – this is not pretty, but he can ride this guy down and stay relatively – like the, the plane of that guy's direction is relatively flat. Yes, he has to turn. I mean, this is this turns into a bit of a scramble. But because he kept that inside toe pointed towards the line of scrimmage, he didn't have to go from his hips being here to all the way back around right until the end. It's just from here to here, which is a little bit easier. Obviously, saves him a little bit of time. Okay, so we talked about this last week, um, and sorry if this is uh, difficult to read. I think the biggest thing is it's process-based, right? Process-based measurements of accuracy and precision. I do not grade on the outcome. I don't. Can, there's 21 other players in the field that can affect the outcome of the play. There's referees, there's weather, there's field conditions, as we saw, um, play calling. What I want you to understand is, you know, we have our pre-contact, our prime, and our post-contact, our pummel. And what we want to look at is, is particularly, uh, it, let's look at Charles to start with. So in the run game, they only had 10 runs in that game that, that I thought he was an active part of, right? So I will dismiss any plays where, where these guys have no impact on the play. Right? So if it's a key pass to the right and they're all running to the left, I, I, don't, I don't want to grade that out because I want to get as much information as I can that's valuable. You don't want to dilute. So in all of his run, if there's only 10, you know, he has – if he steps underneath himself twice, we saw one of them, then it's 80%, right? So so let's dismiss that a little bit. One thing you can say with both of these guys is their pad level. I could probably, if I if they were playing out of three-point stances, you would say your pad level is too high on almost every play. One thing that is really interesting with both of them, though, they play with good hip hinge. They just play with a high chest. If they if decided to bring their chest down a little bit more like they were doing a, an RDL and just kept sticking that butt back a little bit more and use that posterior chain – they could actually drop their chest a little bit and move just as well. It's something we're going to probably work on in the off season. Um, but I think most importantly, like they can still, they can still uh, uh, gather power in their posterior chain because they play with a good hip hinge. They just haven't had a high chest. Okay. So that's something they can work on, but it's a, it's an area of opportunity, but it can still be, it, it can, it's still uh, valuable for both of them. You see in this pass game, particularly the primary, the first and second step, those are just things as we continue, if you continue to evolve 
We saw a couple of them where you're setting flat. And again, I don't know if this number is different if you know they don't run so many quick passes, play action passes, et cetera, this week. And we break this stuff down by every kind of play type. But you know, as you get, you know, if you have a hundred of each, you're gonna have a better uh, a better kind of vision of what these numbers really are versus uh, just one game's worth. But first second step, you can see that we want to, you know, the more times that a guy like Charles Cross stays on his line, the better off he's going to be. You'll get hands, landmark, and catching. That's all a consequence. So the, in the pummel area, hands, landmarks, and catching are all really a consequence of going out too wide and, and doing those angle sets or doing those uh, those flat sets on on the uh, on your initial first and second step. So the first and, se first and second step puts you in that position where you're not ready for contact, so your hands aren't right. Your outside landmark because you you haven't. You, the guy, if, let's say, for example, in the last one that we saw, the defender's going to go across your face. All of a sudden, your landmark's poor because you've 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 gone out too flat. So you're at the wrong real estate position. And because your hands are wrong, you have to grab and catch the guy, take it in the chest, and now you're just kind of wrestling or trying to you know you know go into a, go into a code red. It's going to be able to punch and pass these guys like you really want to. We go down and look at at Zach Tom now. You know, Zach Tom, if you if there's one thing that we could discuss as far as one major area of opportunity, it's that second step in his pass pro. He turns his shoulders very quickly. And when you turn your shoulders, I'm able to open you up. I'm able to bull rush you. I'm able to stab you. You don't use your hands as well as you can because you're you're basically out of position, especially with your outside hand. And so that leads to poor hand placement and catching that you see. What is interesting to me is they they ran the ball a fair amount of times comparative to uh to to Charles. So the numbers are a little bit more accurate they're not as accurate as we'd like in a big we need a bigger sample size but you see there's a lot of green and yellow with both of these guys but there's a lot of green and yellow in the run protection in the run with zach tom i really like the way he engages hands inside you really like his feet you really like the way he engages with his hips as he gets more powerful puts a couple pounds on you're going to see those blocks being sustained even more and i think in pass protection really if you look at everything this guy's doing He's got such great initial footwork. It just, can we stay square to the line of scrimmage for three kicks? That's going to put us in a position to use our hands better. We already marry our hips and our hands up pretty well. It's going to put our put us in a position to do to do that at an even higher level, to use both hands, uh, work both hands inside. And then now because you have that balance, because you're not catching, we see the three reds here, that's what they are, because you're not catching, now we can start working wrists and elbows off. We can start being a little more violent with our uh, – our sets and our resets. And again, just to remind you guys like how we go about this stuff, because I don't want you to think that uh, this is all just random information, right? We grade everything out by, uh, by play type, by re the requirement of the play. So it's not play type, it's the requirement of the play. Are you on the backside? Are you inside zone, outside zone? Are you down blocking? Are you pulling? Do you have a quick pass? Is it is it man pass protection? Is it slide pass protection? Is it a is it a is it a keeper? Is it under center play action? Is it shotgun play action? Like all these things matter because contextually now you can understand where the biggest areas of opportunity for certain players are. So as we look at at this one for example, Charles had a ton of, of man pass protection in this game. He had a couple slide pros, but they did had very very little run. Right, so you're going to expect that number is probably the most you can gather the most information out of the numbers where you have the largest sample size now you go you go to zach now and he has very very little man pass protection he has a couple more slide pros which means you know they were helping him a lot with the tight end they were sliding to him they were giving him opportunities to be successful because it was his first start and was playing against montez sweat who is a bad bad man right but it's hard. It, it'll be a little bit. Uh, you would like to have a little bit more information before making any definitive comments on these guys. What I'm trying to do right now is just paint the picture of how we go about thinking about improvement. Because once you understand just how to think about this improvement, now it's very easy to identify, assess your areas of opportunity, and then build in these what I call progression stacks, so that you can in fact become the best version of yourself. Right. Um, you know, so we like watching film all day. So. If you're enjoying, please subscribe. Uh, hit me up with any questions or comments. Certainly, we're going to be going through this. We'll do some defensive guys too. Tackling, shedding blocks is like super important to this. Uh, it, it, you know, playing actually any position, but you can go across a you know at, at all three levels. The better you do that, you can talk about your footwork in and out of breaks. But what I really like to do is you know start doing player comps because you look at a guy like Zach Tom, 
And Charles Cross is going to be an all pro in this league. I'm, I, he's very, very unique in his ability to extend hands and play with like detached, you know, his, his lower body and upper body can almost completely detached. He can run full speed with his arms out, which is very, very unique. But you see Zach Tom from a, just from a, a movement standpoint, just from a technical standpoint, like he's not really that far away. There's some areas of opportunity, but like every single thing he's doing is coming down to coaching him to do it the right way. And then it's on him to go through the rep, you know, repetitions and go through the progression stacking that it takes to automate his technique. So then he can kind of during those games, make the best decisions possible. So hope you enjoyed it guys. We'll check you out next time. Uh, I think AG and AG and I'll be back sometime at the end of the week for the uh, Packers Eagles preview.